Hi guys and welcome to this video on the solar eclipse that happens on the 10th of June 2021 at 11.52 in the morning and that's based on Europe time. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to give you a rundown of what this chart next to me is all about. That's a snapshot of the sky at the moment this eclipse happens and I'm going to have a look at how the planets interact and what energy that brings up. The eclipse in itself First of all, it's a new moon. So the sun and the moon are conjunct. So the moon is pitch black. And that's usually a time of new beginnings, of drawing things in and the moon kind of recharging its batteries. This is interesting because the moon moves in between the sun and the earth and it blocks out the sun completely. So it's going to appear as a ring of fire. You'll just be able to see the kind of outline of the sun, but you'll only be able to, and I mentioned this in the weekly horoscope, but you'll only be able to see that in parts of Canada and Russia, like on the northeastern side of Canada, not on the coast, but like a few hundred miles inland on the northeastern side. So most of us aren't going to see this. If you do see it, please send me pictures. I'd love to see what this looks like. Um, but that means that the influence of this new moon in Gemini eclipse is going to be felt for about six months. So that has a real impact on what's going to happen for all of us in future. And that's why I make these videos on the full moons and new moons and eclipses. Particularly the eclipses are very, very significant to what's going to happen over the next six month period. So it's kind of good to get a heads up and to know what's coming our way. So let's see what is going on here. First of all, the sun and the moon are at 19 degrees in Gemini. 1 and 9 is 10, and 10 reduces to 1 in numerology. 1 is the energy of the pioneer, the leader, the person who initiates things, the person who takes responsibility and who says, I'm going to generate this process, or I'm going to start this process through my own personal power. I'm going to take charge of it. If it goes wrong, then that's my fault but I feel strongly enough about this to do something about it. It's like the magician in the tarot, pulling in energy from source to kind of energize the system and then channeling that into the earth to make some sort of an impact and really feeling quite strongly about it in the sense of I'm making a meaningful difference here. Gemini, if you look at that um, glyph, is a Roman numeral two. And Gemini is the third sign of the zodiac. It's the first air sign. It has to do with communication. It has to do with the, the personality, the identity, because it's in the first quadrant. Like in the astrology chart, you've got 12 houses, right? And you can split those into four quadrants. So houses one to three are quadrants one, um, four to six are quadrants two, seven to nine, quadrant three, and then the last three houses, 10 to 12 are quadrant four. And the first quadrant has to do with the personality, the identity, the self, my money, the way I think, the way I communicate, my appearance, myself. Quadrant two is the self in connection with others. Three has to do with the self in connection to institutions and groups of people and the other side to a certain extent. And then quadrant four is about transcending the self and leaving the old self behind to discover a new identity, a new personality. So with this being in Gemini, it really is going to be very personal because it gives you the feeling that you're entitled to your own opinion. You're able to speak your mind, your truth. You have your own way of thinking. You have your own perspective and that it's your right to kind of express that. Now, the catch <laughs> is that Gemini is ruled by Mercury. There's always a catch, right? Mercury is the communication planet, and that's in retrograde at the moment. So rather than empowering you to say, you know what, just speak your truth and get creative, and you're always right, it kind of implies, or the influence is that what you're going to say and what you're going to talk about and do isn't exactly 100% accurate, or it's not particularly what you wanted to say to begin with. So the way you express yourself, it may come out differently than intended. 
it does give you a good opportunity to look at things in a different light. So ways of expressing yourself and thinking and talking that have worked in the past may not work before. So once you're over the initial discomfort of that, it's like, okay, well, I've got an opportunity if I think on my toes and if I, if I go with this energy, then I have the, the chance here to discover some new ways of being and living and seeing the world. And it really allows you to kind of regenerate your own perception of the world and everything about you because first quadrant, right? So the new moon in itself is about pulling all this energy in. So we've got loads of Gemini in retrograde energy filling your system. So who am I? What am I doing? Are the things that I've been talking about really right? Or should I kind of reinvent myself as a new kind of persona emerging? Am I the person I want to be? Should I make some changes? Those are all going to be really good questions. And most of the eclipses, well, I'm generalizing here, but I don't think we've had an eclipse in Gemini that recently that saw Mercury being in retrograde. And that's why I feel this eclipse really has the potential to create a real cosmic slash karmic shift for all of us here on planet Earth. Because a lot of people who were very complacent before about who they were and pretty smug and self-satisfied are now going to be inspired <clears throat> to look at themselves differently and to say, do you know what? I've been this person for however many years and do I really want to stay this person? And I really think that it's going to give people a wonderful kind of push to become the best versions of themselves and to be more open-minded and to look at things in a way that's much more generous than they've been before and to become willing to change and to adapt. In my experience, you know, a lot of people say, oh yeah, I'm willing to change. But in reality, personal change is really difficult, like really difficult. And again, in my experience, person, people only do it when they're forced to. So it's not like you wake up one day and say, hmm, am I satisfied with who I am? Not really. I'm going to become a different person. People don't do that. And this <clears throat> isn't a major like difficulty where you're faced with something insurmountable and you you take on this feeling that, oh, I have to become someone else. I have to, I have to change just to survive. It comes through on a much more effortless, nurturing, kind of supportive level. And it says you have the time and space to evaluate who you are and where you've been, and you can now go in a different direction. And this is an eclipse that's going to affect all of us. So I think collectively, as a species, if we all thought that way, and if we were all willing to improve suddenly and to change certain behaviors which aren't that helpful and to be more willing to listen to others and to be more compromising, then I think people will get on a lot better. The pioneering energy, plus this being a new moon, pulls in lots of the Gemini stuff, like I said. And that will inspire people. It's going to bring a lot of eureka moments down from the ethers and a lot of people who are already very intelligent and very clever and very insightful are going to have new insights, which they can then share with the rest of the population and which are really going to make life better for everybody. So I really think, and again, I mentioned this in the weekly horoscope, that there are going to be major developments in science and medicine and invention and technology all the things that have to do with the unmanifest, all of the things that can be influenced via the way people think. And there are a lot of things that haven't been discovered yet. There are a lot of things which are yet to be invented. And the next six months, I think, are really going to see a major jump and a leap in the way things are um, implemented into our society because certain brilliant people will suddenly be very inspired and will also have the confidence to express those ideas publicly. And whether that's right or whether it's inconvenient, it certainly is going to be progress. So things are going to move ahead really nicely. What I um, 
also find very interesting is the new moon is a very personal time. It's like the moon, if you think of it as the moon goddess, when she's pitch black, she's gone home. She's on break. She's kind of like, okay, I'm going to close the door. I want some peace and quiet. Thank you very much. Don't disturb me. I'm meditating. I'm taking a bath. I'm, I'm kind of recharging my batteries and I'm spending some time on self-care. So leave me alone. The fact that we've got Mercury retrograde makes communication much slower and says, I don't want all this noise. So <laughs> zip it. Okay, thanks. I just want to look at things differently and I am not going to be able to plow through heaps and heaps of information. It doesn't quite make sense. I'm looking at things in a way that feels kind of slanted. So I'm just going to take a time out to evaluate what's going on. So two things are kind of saying, calm down, slow down, take a break. And usually that opens things up to do something new. It again reminds me of the tower in the tarot, which is this big structure which is blown to smithereens so that something new can be built in its place. Sometimes you have to clear the space and you have to come to a stop before you can start again. Now the third thing that really influences this is the eclipse itself. So the new moon is interrupted, not the new moon, the, the sunlight is interrupted by this eclipse, by the moon moving between the earth and the sun. And that also says, hey, no sunlight, thanks. We want a little bit of darkness. We want a little bit of privacy. We want a little bit of a timeout. And that is an amazing breeding ground for new ideas and planting these new seeds of intention, which you really need to have a little bit of time and space to do. You can't just rush around and then just throw some seeds into the ground somewhere. You have to kind of focus on that and have the presence of mind to say, okay, this is my flower pot. I'm going to put these seeds in here and wait for them to grow in a few months. So there are three major influences here, which really say that let's stop doing things the way we've been doing them so far. And let's reinvent ourselves and the way we perceive things and the way we interact with the world, and let's do it in a way that's better and more effective. And that bodes really well because, um, you know, there are lots of things which could be done more effectively. We have this eclipse happening on the North Node, 10 degrees in Gemini. So another one pioneering independent energy in Gemini, bringing in this unique content. But eclipses that happen on the North Node pull things in. So it's not about releasing old patterns of thinking primarily. It's about pushing them out with new ideas. So it's not like you have to take some time off to just detox and unwind first and then the new ideas will come. It's, I, it's kind of, I need some peace and quiet because it's a bit noisy and I'm just going to focus on the most important stuff. And then the great ideas come in and make their own space. So you don't have to do very much. It's not like you have to prepare spiritually to receive some major new insights. They kind of arrive of their own accord and they will make their presence known and felt and heard. In terms of what the other planets are doing, we've got Mercury, the communication planet in retrograde, sitting at 20 degrees in Gemini on top of this new moon. It's one degree away, so we've got another one. So with the North Node, the New Moon and Mercury, we've got one, one, one. So really do things on your own. It really urges you to accept your own power and that one person can change the world and can make a huge difference. You don't need a whole team on your side. You don't need an army behind you to back up what you're saying or to kind of get your point across. You getting the right idea and putting it out there, other people will pick it up. One is not the loneliest number. One is more than enough in this case. Mercury in itself is at 20 degrees. One and one is two. <laughs> yeah. And 20 reduces to two. And two is a relationship. The glyph of Gemini is a Roman numeral two as well. So we've got Mercury at two degrees in Gemini, two. So we've got a 22, which is the master number of the builder. So these different ways of looking at things and different ways of thinking and maybe even hearing 
the content generated by other people, is going to leave you with a sense that, hey, I can really sort this very clearly and effortlessly and make sense of it and look at what's really important and what isn't so important, and then work it in your own way to build something really concrete with it, something that is profound, something that's gonna stand the test of time. Like the replacement for the tower, once it's blown up, the next structure that you build is gonna be just as solid and is gonna be there for a while. So this is like a major technological upgrade. It's a major upgrade in thinking, in interacting with other people. And it's fabulous because we do have to take a break sometimes before we can move in a different direction. You can't just go, 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 go on one path and then suddenly veer off course and go somewhere else. Sometimes you have to slow down first. So if you feel like things suddenly don't make sense, then that's not necessarily a bad thing because it will open up your eyes to new possibilities. We've got Venus sitting in this um, sector as well at um, nine degrees in Cancer. So it's still conjunct to the new moon because it's 10 degrees away. And Venus is the planet of love, beauty, creativity. In Cancer, it's very gentle. It's very focused on the home life. It's very focused on helping other people and supporting them. And also supporting yourself and really um, honoring the things that are intangible in life. You know, like a happy family unit or feeling like you're comfortable in your own space or eating a nice meal and feeling a warm glow because you're taking care of yourself. It's at nine degrees, which is spirituality and completion. So what I think, because all this Gemini energy is being downloaded and Venus is involved in all of this, it's kind of loving energy that's being downloaded. Energy that's really going to benefit all of us. It's not like, you know, the, the idea for the atom bomb which, I mean, was brilliant, but not particularly kind. This is progress that isn't negative, that isn't going to destroy e us, each other, the planet. Progress for the sake of progress. It's really um, their ideas and insights which are going to have a positive effect. So you may think I'm really naive and you may think, oh, you know, Greg thinks that something is being downloaded that comes from this cosmically loving universe which wants us all to thrive on our little blue planet. But I really do think that there's some sort of benevolent force at work, in this case, which is making some info available to us at this time. It's coming in via people's minds and people's insights and ideas, and that's how it's going to show up on planet Earth. So I do think there's this loving higher force at work here, which is dropping these little nuggets of gold into people's heads, which are going to make the world sparkle and positive. And it's going to turn things around in a really good, loving, free, accessible to all kind of way. So it's interesting because I don't know, like the last few years haven't felt particularly warm and fuzzy. And it's not like, oh, because we've been through something bad as a species, we now deserve a reward. It's like, you know, you like you're a little kid, you've been to the doctor, here's your lollipop. But it kind of looks that way to me because Venus could be anywhere else, but it isn't. It's part of this eclipse and it's sharing the love and Venus in Cancer is very kind of intimate. I mean, Venus rules Libra and it rules Taurus. So either physical beauty or love for the sake of love, the energy of love and loving ideas and stuff. But with Cancer, it's really like your home, it's your roots. And the way this translates via the eclipse is that the fundamental building blocks of certain aspects of our lives are gonna become kinder and more loving. which I think is great. Okay, then we've got the new moon forming certain aspect patterns with different things in the chart. So first of all, it squares Neptune and Pisces at 23 degrees. Neptune is the water planet of intuition and dreams and your inner guidance. It rules Pisces, so it's very happy in that placement because it's able to 
navigate the spiritual realms without any distraction and it gives you major access to it and two and three is five five is freedom so your intuition works hand in hand with all these new ideas and insights and one they allow you to really make sense of them and to receive them but second of all they're able to allow you to express them because your imagination is fired and you're really you feel strongly about what you're receiving and you can see the potential of it. You can kind of play the tape forward and say, oh, this is gonna be amazing. Let me do something, it really inspires you. So that um, part of it really kind of confirms Venus's role because Venus is the personal planet of love and beauty and Neptune is the outer planet of love and global love and love for your fellow man and humanity like the higher octave of Venus. <clears throat> so that's amazing. Then we've got um, the new moon forming a trine with Saturn at 13 degrees in Aquarius. Saturn is real structure and it's rules that you can rely on and it's security, and it's something that's going to be quite permanent. One and three is four, same thing, security and structure and numerology. It's like the emperor in the tarot. And Aquarius is the humanitarian, it's the teacher. So the insights are going to lead to things that can affect everybody for a long time to come. And that's going to serve all of us down here on planet Earth. We've got other aspect patterns. Let me just check. Okay. So we've got the square with Neptune in Pisces. Then we've got this trine with Saturn. And that's it, really. There are lots of other aspect patterns in the chart, but they're not, they're not directly connected to the new moon in Gemini. So it's interesting because usually a new moon connects to a lot of other planets which really influence the event or the energy, but here it's very minimal. So it's like these new ideas and things aren't being overly complicated by outside influences. And the things that are really important are that it's loving, and supportive and that is going to benefit everybody. The other pa aspect patterns that do play a role here, we've got the North Node in Gemini that forms a trine also with Saturn in Aquarius, okay? So downloaded energy that's going to be good for everybody. And then Venus forms connections, yep. But that's not technically the new moon. So the new moon in itself is pretty unburdened. Yeah, they're just Neptune and Saturn, which is great. Okay, I'm just tilting my head to see if there's anything else. There is something called a, if you look at an astrology book, you won't find it because I call it a triangle of harmony, but it's not something that's usually looked at or used in astrology. It's when there's one trine with two sextiles on top of it that really creates an area of real harmony, as far as I'm concerned. And it's between the new moon in Gemini and Saturn in Aquarius, that trine. Then it's got a sextile sitting on top of it, connecting Chiron to Saturn. And then Chiron moves back to um, the new moon in Gemini. So we've got that kind of connection, the North Node in Gemini. So Chiron is the wounded healer. At 12 degrees in Aries, it's about communication as a way of healing and taking personal responsibility for your own healing and saying, if I want to feel better, I'm going to have to do it myself. I can't wait for someone else to do it for me. I can't wait for someone to absolve me of responsibility. It's my job. That can feel quite harsh at times, just like, well, where do I begin? It's just little old me. <laughs> but with this, it's this, um, it, it's really a nice 
driving factor that says, do you know what, this information you're getting, it's being downloaded for a reason. And if you do something with it, and if you speak up about it, and if you rely on yourself and you have the courage to actually do something about this, you're gonna benefit from it yourself, you're gonna heal yourself as such, and you'll heal everybody else. So this is really like a very idealistic, positive energy for all of us alive at this moment. I like it. Yeah. And I could go into all the other planets and what they're doing and how they interact with each other. But I really think and feel that a big point of this and a big identifying factor is that this, this new moon in Gemini eclipse is so unblemished and so uncomplicated. It's not meant to include all these other factors. That's why they're staying out of it. So really be open to... Um, receiving some new insights. And I mean, not all of us are politicians or people in power or inventors or scientists, but some of us are. And some of us are creative and some of us work with people one-to-one -one, and some are writers. And it really doesn't matter what situation you're in, inspiration can hit anywhere. And whether you do have huge influence and a great idea will affect thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people, or you're just one person, it only takes one time to be inspired and to come up with a brilliant idea and to put that out there to change your role in life. So especially if you're dissatisfied or if you feel like you have this potential which hasn't been realized or there are some sort of ideas and ways of thinking and seeing the world that you haven't been able to articulate just yet, then really take a moment here during this eclipse to meditate and to say, I'm willing to receive good, loving ideas that are going to benefit me and everybody else and see what you get. And if you are, I don't know, like a cobbler and you suddenly get this amazing insight for a self-help book and you download it and write it, then you're not going to be a cobbler for much longer. You're going to be a self-help guru, as an example. If you're a politician and you're just kind of going through paperwork and you're totally disenchanted and you suddenly get this brilliant insight, which um, allows you to kind of redesign the whole system and you feel really confident about it, then it's really important that you do something with it because we've got enough uninspired people we don't have that many inspired people who are looking at the greater good and want to do something for humanity. But after this, we will for six months, no less. So I'm really encouraged by this. I really think that it means that 2021 is going to be a fabulous year. And remember, we had an eclipse last month as well. Check out that video. But that really gave people the kind of personal drive and power to start again. And then combined with this, with all the downloads coming in, it's like, hey, I've actually got material to move ahead with. So they work perfectly together. Okay, I hope that gives you an insight into what this is about and what you'll be working with. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a button that says book your reading. Just click on that to order your reading with me. In my personal readings, the same way I've just read this chart, what I do is I read your chart. I take your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. That allows me to draw up a snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born. And once I have that, I can really read you. It's like a blueprint of who you are. And it shows me where your natural strengths just lie, what you need to work on a little bit, certain things that are destined and where you have a lot of control and choice. So if you're trying to understand yourself better, it's really an amazing tool to use. I, use. I also use the progress chart, the transits, to look at what's coming up in future and how you've developed over time and where you're likely to be at at this point in your life. What's coming up over the next couple of months and years and how you can kind of ride those waves and make life easier for you. So if you've got some big decisions to make, if you want to 
look at when the best timings are to make certain changes, then please get in touch with me. I also use astrocartography, which reverses the process. So by looking at your birth chart, I'm on planet Earth looking up at the sky, the way the planets were. When I do the astrocartography, I position myself in the sky and look at how the planets were moving over the Earth and what energy or what influence was over a particular location on planet Earth at the moment you were born. And that is there as long as your chart is there. So it kind of gives you a nice immediate insight into what areas are going to support you and work really well for you and which ones are going to be more problematic. So if you're thinking of moving or you want to look at what areas are best for you, then get in touch with me as well for a personal reading. Go to gregoryscott.com, click on the button to order your reading. I also use the tarot, numerology and my intuition. I combine all of them to kind of give you answers to questions you may have. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. Have a fabulous time during this eclipse and I'll speak to you soon.